Hello, Malcolm here, and welcome to Tuesday Teaching Tips. This is episode number 269, and today we're talking about how to investigate a passage of Scripture. How to investigate it. This may be basic to many of you, but I think it's a useful reminder for everybody, and it's one of the ways that helps me to get into a text. And perhaps you have your own techniques, I'd love to know what they are, but this is something that helps me. And this came to my mind because in our uh, Athens Institute of Ministry UK and Ireland uh, course that we're doing at the moment, we've been discussing interpreting passages, preparing for lessons and so on. And uh, one of the uh, people on the course, Mike Poole, made the comment that he likes to let the Bible wash over him by uh, the text, wash over him by, by reading it. And I think that's right. And then, then what do we do? Once we've let it wash over us, we've had a good sort of dive into the text and read it, perhaps in more than one translation. What then do we do? If we're trying to pick it apart to understand its, uh, its structure, its skeleton, if you like, or just the substance of it, how do we do that before we get to the point where perhaps we want to process it into a lesson? And this is the stage that I adopt with most of my lessons. I find especially helpful for narrative and for parables, although it can apply to other passages as well. This is the pulling it apart phase. And so I've done something a bit different today, done this on screen recording, and you'll see that I'm using a mind map piece of software. Uh, you can do it without mind map, but this is how I do it. I've got my uh, text on the left there. You'll see that it's Luke 10, 38 down to verse 42. I'm preaching on this in uh, two Sundays time. So I've already started some work on this. And uh, on the uh, right hand side, we have the uh, the mind map. And so here I am, Luke 10, 38 to 42. So what I'm going to do is show you not everything, it'll take a long time, but the basics of how I go about approaching this. So the f I begin to ask myself some questions of some things that are in the passage. And I start with very basic things like who? Who is uh, involved here? And so who do we have? Of course, we have Jesus, uh, obviously. And we have his disciples. Oh, let's get that right. Jesus, disciples. Uh, we have uh, Martha. We have Mary, of course. And that's it in terms of who's in view. Of course, you may want to ask yourself who else might be around, but we're going to have to come on to that a bit later. But for sure, those are the people uh, that are there at, in this uh, scene. The next question you might ask is, where are we? And where are the different locations even within this narrative? So the first location you could say uh, is on the uh, is on the road. They're on the way. They're going somewhere, and that road must leave lead uh, to somewhere. Like where are they going? Perhaps beyond this place here, and and from where have they come? That may be not obvious in this passage. It might be something to, to look at in the rest of the chapter. Or perhaps if there is a parallel passage that might give us that information. Uh, we're not going to answer the questions when we're doing this phase. This is just digging in to find out the detail and to uh, find the questions we want to ask to discern more about the passage. So there's a, a road going to this village. Oh, and then there's the village. That's the next location we know about here. And we want to find out, perhaps, we can certainly ask the question, does this village have a name? Not mentioned here. And where geographically is this village? We might want to look that up on a Bible map if we can find out where it is. The next location here is, of course, Martha's home. It's called uh, her home, isn't it, here? Uh, it's not Mary's home. It's Martha's. Martha opened her home to him. So we've got Martha's home. I won't, go, I won't correct all the spelling mistakes, right? It'll take too long. Uh, is it also Mary's home? That is a question we could ask. And we could also ask who owns this home? Why no man mentioned? Um, in that culture, you'd expect perhaps a man to be mentioned. Is there any way of finding that out? And is that relevant to the passage? We don't know yet. We're not going to ask. You'll know some of these answers, of course, already, but we're going to pretend. And I think this is very helpful for investigating a passage, even if you know it quite well and you might know or think you know the answers to some of these questions, is to ask the questions anyway because it reminds you of things that either are or are not in the text. Are they mentioned for a reason or not mentioned for a reason? So uh, even if you know the answer, why not ask the question? Uh, there is another place 
mentioned here, a physical place, if you like, or, or spot, which is the place where Mary sat. So we'll put this as the place, I'm going to call this the place of learning, where she sits. And that place, I wonder, is that where Martha came to speak to Jesus? That's a question to ask myself. Again, may not be answered in the passage, but it's to speculation. It's a way of using our imagination, helps us to get more into the passage. Was it the very spot or was it somewhere else? Did he caught, did, are they somewhere else? And in that case, did that happen, that conversation between Mary and Jesus, in view of the disciples and Mary. Um, we, you know, is there a way to know that? So that's the where in the passage, I think. What about actions? You know, for such a short passage, there are so many actions here. How many actions can you see? Let me give you a few. There's traveling at the beginning. They're traveling somewhere. There's hospitality uh, being shown by Martha. Uh, she uh, opened her house. So, you know, you're going to get the idea of opening the door to let Jesus and the disciples in. There's opening, hospitality. Uh, another action is sitting. That's what Mary is doing. We've got the action of listening because that's what Mary is doing to Jesus, listening. We've got distracted, um, distraction going on. That's Martha, of course, by all the things she needs to prepare. We've got... Um, uh, approaching. Uh, Martha approaches Jesus and uh, she goes to Jesus and then she accuses. We've got, so we've got accusing going on. She accuses Mary of not helping and then I'll put it on the same line here uh, and then she makes a request to Jesus to sort her sister out. We've also of course got teaching going on teaching Jesus teaching Mary but also Jesus teaching Martha two bits of teaching perhaps some one he prepared and one he hadn't prepared but he responded to at the moment and I'm going to focus on the teaching here for well we've got Mary but we've also got let's say Martha and what kind of teaching is she receiving um, she is receiving correcting about priorities she is being guided guided so guiding guiding is going on and I would say reassuring is going on, reassuring for Mary. And that especially if she can hear this conversation between uh, Martha and Jesus, which is, goes back to our question of whether this is happening in view of the disciples of Mary. So can we answer that question? Can we not? Can we speculate what it might have been like if she could hear? Uh, it could just be interesting, another way of getting into the passage. So who, where, and actions. Now, in different narratives and different passages, you'll find different headings relevant. Some, the where, may not be relevant. If you're doing a psalm, might not be, might be. Uh, but you have to decide which are the headlines that you need for your passage. And definitely who and where and the actions are important uh, for this passage. I'm going to give you titles of others, but not fill them all in now, but I, that I found in this passage to be useful. And w the, uh, this one came to me, who does what? That's an interesting question to ask of this passage. Who does what? Uh, Jesus enters the home. He teaches Mary and he teaches Martha as well as his disciples. D the disciples appear to be passive are they just observing? Uh, Martha, what's she doing? She is opening her home to Jesus and his disciples. She's distracted by the preparations, of course. Uh, she accuses Jesus uh, of not caring and of Mary by implication. She uh, requests Jesus to correct Mary. Uh, she herself is taught by Jesus, even that was if that wasn't her expectation uh, in this context. Mary, of course, is there. What actions is uh, she involved in? What's she doing? She sits in front of Jesus, uh, perhaps with the male disciples. Uh, she listens to Jesus. She has the experience of being taught by him. And I guess maybe she's a bit embarrassed uh, by her sister. And so although we've got all the people and actions over here, this question focuses us a bit more on the, the uh, whether 
where the energy is and where the focus of the narrative is. And so those are the people I'm going to ask. Who does what? Jesus does what? Disciples do what? Even though they don't do anything, they're still referenced at the beginning of the passage. So there's something going on there. Um, as I said, Martha and finally Mary. So you'd want to fill those in. Another question I often ask in these, uh, doing this investigation is what is notable? What stands out? What do I think is different? What's worthy of note? To give you one example, I noticed that Jesus is called Lord uh, three times uh, in this passage. That seems interesting. In such a short passage, the word Lord is used, or used, I should say, three times. Uh, that seems to be notable. Um, don't need that. Let's go back to, um, yes, Martha, Martha. Why does he do that? Why does he say her name twice? Is there something there to look into? Again, these are sort of questions to think about the passage. The fact that there's no man mentioned in terms of the house, is that significant or not? The fact that Mary sits, it looks like at least, with the disciples, is that significant? Or what is the significance of that and culturally and in terms of rabbis and teaching? Um, I didn't notice this. I heard this from somewhere else. But I did take note that... At the end of the passage, where are we? You're worried and upset about many things, verse 41. Few things are needed, only one. Is that deliberate on Jesus' part, or, or, or the way that Luke has recorded it, that we go from, so let me write this down, we go from many to few to one. Is this something to take note of there? And the last thing that, I need to wrestle with for this lesson for sure is to define what better means. She's chosen what is better uh, in the Greek agathos meaning good. So why does Jesus say that? What does he mean by better? So those are a few of the notable things there. you may find other things there. I'd also write down any particular questions and things that trouble me or I find difficult to grasp. And then another thing I often do with this is to begin to construct my own idea of what the structure might be or, or a structure of the passage might be, if I can spell that right. And so, for example, it looks to me like verse 38 is sort of an introduction. And then in verse 39, uh, where are we? Verse 39, we've got a number of different uh, and following we've got a number of different scenes uh, so let's say uh, 39 and uh, following we've got we've got Mary who's um, whoops in the home we've got oh, that should be there okay uh, we've got M Martha uh, so she's Mary sits there. That's the first thing that we see happen. Then, then Martha comes in to talk to, to Jesus. Um, her situation might be part of the structure here that she's needing to prepare and she's not being helped. Uh, her complaint about Jesus, actually, don't you care? And uh, obviously, uh, uh, complaint about Martha, uh, Mary, as a result, and uh, her request uh, to. Uh, Jesus to say, please you know, help my, tell my sister what to, to do to help out. So her situation, her complaint, her request, that's a, a three-part structure. You could use that. Um, and then we've got Jesus. This is all in the home, of course. Verse 38 is outside the home. She opens her house, but that's sort of the introduction. Then we've got these three scenes and bits in the in the home. We've got Mary in the home. We've got G Martha in the home. We've got Jesus uh, in, uh, in the home. And with Jesus, we've got his, uh, we could say his observations. We've got his teaching. And we've got his uh, further observations, uh, you could say here. Uh, his first observations are that um, Martha is worried and she is upset. Um, his teaching is essentially that one thing is needed. That's the core of it. Uh, that would need, obviously, some further investigation and explaining, but um, there we are. And his 
uh, further observations are that Mary chose what's better, whatever that means, as we talked about, and that Mary will receive uh, receive her reward. Now, what is that reward? It won't be taken away. She, she's chosen, and it won't be. It won't be taken away. What won't be taken away? There's a question, right? I know I can spell receive. Um, right, it's just my typing. Uh, Mary will receive her reward. What? What is? What's implied by that? There's a question, and that could go back to what's notable back up here. I'll stop there because there's a lot more one could put onto this, but you can see, um, look at that. I mean, how long did that take? If you if you just read a few verses and you let it wash over you and you you have a, 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 you can see it there in front of you, it doesn't take very long to get all of this: the who, the where, the actions, the notable issues, the who does what, the a potential structure or what we can see as an outline on some level. And once you've got this, I find that a lot of other things become clearer now I've got an overview of the passage and after this this is when we go to our commentaries our bible dictionaries and other resources to help us to get more uh, scholarly in understanding of the text but I like to do this first to read the passage in a couple of translations or more think about it pray over the passage especially a short passage is quite easy to pray through and then do this and then I feel like okay I understand understand the basics of what's going on here. Now let me get the scholarly input and make some notes and then think about the context in which I'm going to share this lesson, who will be there, what are the needs, and then what's relevant to do justice to the what the passage always says. It's, it's always a message. Uh, this one thing is used, an always message. But what does that mean for this group at this time in this place? Now, well, that's a now contextual interpretation for for us for me for Watford as it will be in a couple of Sundays time so I hope this is helpful uh, perhaps this seems very uh, baby steps to you and and I'm into that I hope it's refreshing if this is something you've never done or seen done uh, why not try it and maybe a mind map isn't the right way for you you can take a piece of paper and draw all over it or you can just do it as a list of uh, things on a, on a, 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 a document. Um, you can just put the headline where and who and actions and write it all down or type it in in different ways. It doesn't have to be like this. I like this because I can look at the whole thing on that one sheet. I can print it out and here's my one I did earlier. Uh, so I can print that out and look at it or I can look at it on the screen and I go back to it and reference it when I'm uh, uh, doing further study and preparing the lesson. So let me know what you think. That's our teaching tip for today. I hope you found it useful. If you know anybody that might benefit from this, do please pass the link on. If you haven't subscribed already, then please do and hit the notification bell and you'll you'll find out, you'll, you'll be notified when more of these come out. And uh, if you want to send me some feedback, please do. Malcolm at MalcolmCox.org is the email address or MalcolmCox.org for the website. You can leave a voicemail there if you want to or, uh, or leave a message uh, on the website. And I think... Uh, I think that will do for today. Thanks, Mike Poole, for um, mentioning something about this in the uh, AIM forums that we have. So until the next time, keep calm and carry on teaching. Take care. Go ahead.